Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So a lot of you guys know that I like to call my blasters nuggets a lot of the time, especially if they are like more ridiculously shaped ones. Um... <laughs> the negotiator. You know exactly why I bought one of these. It is a nugget! Like an actual one! Look at it! Look at this! It's perfect! It's a nugget! A nugget-shaped Nerf Blaster is something that I needed in my life, and this is everything I had hoped it would be. It is massive. It is actually huge. It is as big as the Strife is, pretty much. Super tall, super chunky, 8 dart capacity, hammer action, big grip, it's everything I wanted, it's everything I lived for. It's, it is a nugget. Let's start with the design. Other than the fact that this blaster is a nugget, look how ridiculous it looks when you flip it. Other than the fact that the blaster is literally shaped like a nugget, it's basically a smaller version of the Judge, which makes sense because it was released at the same time as the Judge, and this one is very creaky for some reason. I have no idea why. Chances are it's been used heavily in the past, but I digress. The design of this blaster looks just as good as every other Doomlands blaster. I think it looks really, really cool. It looks like some sort of arc reactor thing turned into a nerf blaster, which is a very interesting concept, and not one that they've ever done before. Not in Doomlands or Zombie Strike, or any other line like this. They obviously have a transparent piece of plastic right here so that you can see some of the internals, but it isn't as revealing as some other Doomlands blasters like the Lawbringer, for example, which traditionally showed all of the internals. This one just shows the basic hammer mechanism and the spring, but you can't really see the cylinder rotation mechanism. It's hidden up here behind the orange plastic. I think that's all right, though. It doesn't need to show everything. I mean, the double punch shows everything. The double punch is magnificent, but it doesn't matter. I'm getting off topic. And just like every Nerf blaster released in the last billion years, you turn it around and there is no paint on the other side. There's only a Negotiator logo up here, no Nerf logo or Doomlands, primarily because they decided to print the warning labels in every language on the face of the earth. They could have at least painted the Negotiator logo, like, come on, Hasbro! They didn't even put, like, any shell details on here. Literally just the blaster and, and, and the logos. They couldn't even do that. God, Hasbro! I'm going to harp on this in every single video until I see change. I'm cha I feel like I'm going to be doing this forever. But what about the ergonomics? Because Doomlands is notorious for not having the biggest, most comfortable grips. This is a pretty big and pretty comfortable grip. I have pretty big hands, and I will say, this blaster feels very nice to hold on to. I think the grip is nice and rounded, smooth and filleted. The details feel good. It's got like these finger choil designs built into it, which feels really good to hold on to. I like the grip. And this is a foregrip, which you'll never use because the blaster doesn't even need to have a foregrip. Yes, it's big, but it's not that big. I wouldn't use this as a secondary. I'd use this as a sidearm, but there is a foregrip there, and it's very, very comfortable. Again, just like the main grip. Super smooth and rounded and comfortable. They really went out of their way to give you good ergonomics on something that looks like this. Literally, all it's missing is a stock. Like, I wouldn't even have been surprised if the bottom of the grip had, like, an upside-down stock attachment point like the, uh, the Scravenger has. That would have just been the icing on the cake. But they didn't do that, which I understand because it's, it's not that big of a blaster. It is big, but it's not gigantic. Now we gotta get onto the functionality, which is... Where, where my happiness goes away. So this blaster is a hammer action cylinder fed blaster, just like the hammer shot. In fact, the cylinder rotates just like the hammer shots does, and there's no like locking mechanism, just like the hammer shot for some reason, because the, the hammer shot really needed a locking mechanism, but there is a big space on either side so that you can easily turn the cylinder, which is very nice because if this was all filled in, it would be very hard to turn the cylinder. That's the one problem I have with the Roto Fury. Probably will review that next week, but it doesn't really matter. So to load this blaster, you fill it with darts, you pull the hammer down, the hammer action is pretty smooth, but the hammer is the original hammer shot design, so it's kind of sharp on the back, and then you can fire once. 
This blaster obviously comes equipped with air restrictors, but the thing is, there have been a lot of times where I will pull the hammer down and pull the trigger, and it just goes right through the air restrictor. The thing snaps forward really aggressively, and I'm not sure why it does that, because the air restrictor is literally supposed to stop that from happening, but it happens a lot if you dry fire this blaster. The, the fix of the problem? Just don't dry fire it like a pleb. But that leads me onto one very big, very genuine complaint, the trigger. Now, I have used a lot of Nerf Springers, and most of them have a very similar feeling trigger. It's a little bit hard to pull in, but when you do pull it in, it snaps really hard, the blaster kind of jumps a little bit in your hands, and the dart fires. This one has an excessively difficult pull to it for some reason. You have to really push down on the trigger to get it to pull. I am putting, like, a lot more force than I usually do, and it still hasn't pulled yet. And when it does, it is, like, really, it's really rough. It feels like somebody's slapping you when you pull the trigger, and it doesn't really feel good to do it. I don't understand why the trigger is so hard to pull. I mean, if you just do it really fast, then yeah, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I do still think it's worth noting because it's really weird. The trigger on this blaster, the whole mechanism here is the same as the hammer shot, so why is the trigger so much harder to pull on this blaster than the hammer shot? I have no idea. But with that said, let's get on to the firing demo. You, bandit! You stick him up! I got a nugget and I'm not afraid to use it! Stick him up, dang it! You, you made me do this! You made me do this! You made me do this! <laughs> I told you I wasn't afraid to use the nugget! You didn't listen! You didn't listen! <laughs> So, the Nerf Negotiator. Am I going to give it extra points because it's shaped like a nugget? Probably. It's really hard to control my biases in these videos, even though I do my best to be objective. I'm just being honest here. And while this blaster looks absolutely hilarious and is a joy to use just because of how ridiculously big it is for what it's doing, and how ridiculously shaped it is, I just don't see much of a practical usage for this. You'll get more use out of a trailblazer or a modified hammer shot or something along those lines. There really isn't too much use for this practically, unless you look deep into your soul and find the way to master the art of swatting darts out of the air using the blaster shell. There are very few blasters that you can do that with, and I think this is one of them just because there is so much surface area here that is made of just, like, thick, solid plastic. And while I say thick, solid plastic, I mean hollow plastic. The blaster is huge, but it's very light and very easy to whip around corners and snap around like an axe. I'm just imagining, like, replacing this foregrip for, like, a foam attachment thing here, like a big katana blade or something like that, and then using this as a blaster and then hitting somebody with it like a melee weapon like that. That would be the most badass and useful blaster on the entire planet, holy crap. But there is one really big problem with this blaster that I haven't even addressed yet. The cylinder is very unreliable. If you pull this hammer down too fast, sometimes it doesn't rotate at all, sometimes it rotates twice. That is not a problem I've ever seen on a hammer action blaster. I've seen that on things like the Searchfire and the Shockwave because those are using big heavy cylinders with a big heavy prime, but this one is a small controlled hammer action with an 8 dart cylinder that isn't very big and for the most part is hollow and spaceless. I have no idea why the cylinder has so many reliability issues, but I experienced plenty of those while testing this, which is really disappointing because I actually really wanted to use this. Another thing I can dock points for with this is the performance out of the box. It's hitting about stock and strike ranges, which is kind of depressing, but at the same time kind of expected for a hammer action blaster like this. Usually, nerf hammer actions aren't the strongest hitters because the hammer action is so much harder to get the same kind of performance out of, especially if you're using a default spring and you want the hammer prime to be accessible, but it's worth noting nonetheless. You can't put a spring upgrade in here like any other blaster, but I, again, I do think that it is worth noting because some people are going to be wanting to use this as a secondary rather than a sidearm due to just its sheer size. It's, it's a nugget. I've said that multiple times now. But overall, if what you're looking for is 
this. I mean, this already has the target audience written on it. It is a nugget. If this is what you're looking for, you'll probably be happy with it. It's doing what you want it to do. It's not doing any of it special, but it is doing what you want it to do. It works okay enough. I just don't really like the trigger, and I think the performance could be better out of the box. Both of those things can be fixed with some light mods, and I do plan on modding this. And with that said, if you want to get one of these, I'll link it in the description below, even though you cannot buy them retail anymore, and they're pretty expensive on Amazon. But but under the hopes that they might appear on Amazon again, I will link it in the description. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye.